Saving Fiona. This book is dedicated to all the members of Team Fiona who worked tirelessly to save baby Fiona. You showed how the world's incredible commitment, teamwork, and intensity it takes to give animals the care they deserve. That's a lot. This is Fiona. She's a baby hippomamus, but not just any baby hippomamus. She's the first premature hippomamus to be raised by humans. She is a survivor. This is her story. There have not been hippos in the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden for 20 years. People really love hippos. They're big, round bodies in storybook. Peel made them male equestrian animals at the zoo when the zoo planned to build a new African animal habitat, making a space for hippos was top priority. One thing hippos need is water, lots of water. The water in the 7,000 7, gallon hippo pool cover is 1% rainwater. Collect and save every time it rains in Cincinnati to keep the water clear so visitors are always able to see the hippos. From all sides, the hippo makes use of the big pool filter in town. The residents of Hippo Cove were 17-year-old Bibby and 30-year-old Henry. They arrived in 2016. Bibby had only lived with a female hippomamus, Henry. It was the first male hippo I had ever seen. Henry had lived with many hippos, male and female. He had even fathered some babies. Everyone hoped that Bibby and Henry would get along and have some babies of their own. Not long after the pair was seduced, there was good news. Bibby and Henry were going to be parents. Scientists from the zoo research team conducted the world's first ultrasound on a now hippopotamus. Because hippos had a thick layer of fat to insulate them from their life in the water, nobody was sure the ultrasound would even work. But a sign slid under Bibbo's huge baby, and sure enough, you could see a spinal cord and even little hippo's feet. Zoo staff continued to monitor Bibbies throughout her pregnancy. Soon, there would be a baby hippomamus at the Cincinnati Zoo. But sometimes things happen too soon, and the baby's caregivers noticed that they were only two months early. Bibby was acting as if she was going to give birth. She had no appetite. She was swimming continuously, doing bear rolls. Her body showed signs of labor. They rushed to the area of Hippo Cove where they got a big surprise. Even Bibby wasn't due to give birth until March, lying on the ground, much of the little hippos anybody, anybody would ever see. It was January 24, 2017. At only 29 pounds, the baby hippo was about the size of a heavy football. Hippos are normally three times the size of birth and very active. In the wild, hippos are born in the water and can climb right onto the mother's back. They even nurse underwater. This little hippo had the entire team shocked. Being a preemie, the baby just lay there. She was too weak to stand and couldn't climb. At first, the mother baby looked at the baby with wild, mild curiosity. There was no time to waste. The zoo's care team jumped into action. They picked up the baby and started to warm her in thick blankets. Everyone had lots of questions. What do we feed her? Should we put her in the water? Do we make her stronger? How would a hippo mom take care of a premature baby in the wild? Nobody ever raised a premature hippo. If Fiona was going to survive, everybody would be taking care of her would be to learn everything one day at a time. A team of specialized caregivers was assembled, including zoos, hippo, keepers, nursery staff, a baby animal expert, and an animal health team of veterinarians, veterinarian technicians, and a zoo nutritionist. Team Fiona was committed to saving the baby hippo's life, whatever it took. After taking it over, they decided to name the female baby Hippo Fiona, after a lovable princess of the wiggly ears from the movie Shrek. 
Zoo decided to share Fiona's struggles with the worldwide social media. Everyone soon fell in love with the little hippo. They rooted for her, sent her support, positive vibes, and on the need of the most. Team Fiona grew and grew. It was a big hippo. The team knew that someone had to stay with the baby around the clock, literally holding her to keep her warm. A special area in the hippo barn was set aside to live until she began to grow. The building had heated floors, heat in the room, and it was created in IDs to make sure she didn't get chilled. Even her little pool became a hot tub, filled with water at nearly 100 degrees. The first dilemma was getting Fiona to nurse. As in the case with all infant mammals, it would be the best for Fiona to drink her mom's milk. But Bibby is huge, over 31 pounds, and Tiny Fiona couldn't reach her to nurse. The team found the biggest breast pump in the market, but the idea didn't work. So as Tiny slid under babies again, and they had to make Bibby saw for Fiona an ultrasound, and had milked her own cow, the team was able to get some milk. Fiona was able to drink a little Bibby's milk, giving her important antibodies for her mom. And the zoo nutritionist sent milk samples off their analysis to make through observatory, National Zoo, Washington, D.C. They learned for the first time that hippo milk is much higher in protein and lower fat than human milk. So every day, special formula was mixed up and heated for Fiona to drink. But it was difficult to keep Fiona interested in feeding. And sometimes she would have difficult time breathing. You can imagine how much Fiona did not like oxygen tube channel in her nose. The zoo knows should keepers know the keys to raising healthy baby males are making sure the baby gains weight and stays hydrated. At one time, the one month old Fiona was a little so She had much energy. She wasn't wasting eating. And even worse, she wasn't keeping down what little food she did eat. It takes a village to raise a premature hippo. Someone on the zoo staff shared her when one daughter was sick and needed fluids, so her hospital called a specialized vascular access team to find her tiny veins, and her daughter recovered. And so when the zoo reached for the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, they sent their specials vet nurse right over to put the hippo IV. It took a couple of tries, but Fiona pulled the first one out, and eventually the IV stayed in for a week, and Fiona was finally well hydrated. She started gaining weight and became more active. Fiona had turned a corner. Fiona began putting on two to three pounds a day and graduated two more pull sizes as she grew. Once she was a few months old, she began living in the area adjacent to her mother and father and also the family could begin bonding. As stage in her young life, Fiona spent the time much of her time when her keepers and members of Fiona team would swim with her and play. They gave her some exercise and feed her bottle, especially prayer forma. It was the only way to keep her healthy. The team was encouraged by Fiona's progress, but at the same time, everyone was worried about the risks and volume returned to the baby Henry. After all, the parents weighed over 7,000 pounds combined and Fiona was so little. Her carers and zoos, mammals, careers worked up step-by-step -step plan for Fiona. She began learning to push off the bottom of the indoor pool, chaperoned by keepers, in case she couldn't navigate the deeper water to get the surface to breathe. Then Fiona started spending time with baby, baby indoors, giving them a chance to get to know each other better without risking water. Fiona did amazing things, Bibby. She says, exploring her mouth, which made everybody a bit nervous, and Bibby was proving to be a great hippo mom. The world celebrated these milestones right along Fiona's care team. People would get along enough videos and photos that soon shared via social media. They demanded a daily phone fix. <laughs> Fiona fix. The next big hurdle was the outdoor pool. Where the water is nine feet deep, little Fiona was less than two feet tall. Even though hippos spent all day in the water resting, staying cold, they couldn't actually swim. They are so dense as they would sink right to the bottom. 
But instead, they walk along the bottom of the river's pools and propel their bodies to the water's surface to breathe. An adult can hold this breath for five minutes, but Fiona's lungs were not developed enough to do that. So at first, Fiona would go with her keepers, which was also much fun for her. Her boats were built for a long life in the water, and the keepers soon saw Fiona was no exception. She loved the pool. Then came the big day everyone would look forward to, the little, the little sadness when Fiona was able to, about four months old and it was time to let her explore the big pool of Bibby. This would mean the end of the daily swimming contact with the zookeepers and it raised her since her unexpected beginning. Fiona did great with her mom and had fun in the pool playing bouncing around her every day. It was clear that the keepers missed her and was since missed them, which is a good sense which she spent life with hippos, not people. The grand final was family reunion. When Henry and Bibbo and Fiona started spending time in the pool together, Fiona continued to play very active. Little hippo, by the time she was six months old, she weighed over 400 pounds. Sometimes Fiona settles down on the shallow end of the pool, staying cool, she takes a nap. Everyone at the Sydney Zoo agrees that they were learned a lot from Fiona. We would like to very experts on hippo ultrasounds, hippo milk, and everything else you need to raise a premature baby hippo the first time. But most we learned was love cares and makes the impossible. Fiona taught us never to give up. A note from Dan Marinard. In my 40 years of the zoo field, I had never seen such a massive interest in that point of love. Encouragement for one animal like I've ever seen for Fiona. Some of it's her, save for the brink of story. And some is due to social media. But everybody who knows her will tell you is very interested something special about Fiona. She is one of the kind and simple to hope and people all engaged all over the world. Fiona celebrates her first birthday.